Good morning, everyone. It's Lonnie, and today is day 26 of May. And the word was supposed to be magnify, but I had done that one recently, so I changed it to marvelous. There's a couple of verses that I like. One I did not write out, but it's in Psalm 118. And of course, that's the first one that jumps in my head today. Psalm 118, verse 22. I'll start there. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is what the Lord has done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So when I read that, the word context came to mind again. This marvelous thing that the Lord has done that is marvelous in our eyes is referring to um, Jesus becoming the cornerstone because it's talking about the stone that the builders rejected, and that's Israel. So that's what the Lord has done, and that's what mar that's what's marvelous in our eyes. And that is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because Jesus has become the cornerstone. That's how I see that now. But that's not what I wrote down, and so it's not too late. So that's Psalm 118, verse 22 to 24. Because the verse I did choose, I'm pretty sure, is related to this section here. So let's read the one I did pick. The verse is in Revelation 15, verses 3 and 4. And they, which are the tribulation saints, sorry, the tribulation saints, they sang the song of Moses, the bondservant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, O Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy, for all the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed." So when it talks about great and marvelous are your works, I think the greatest work that he would say he did was the fact that um, he sent Jesus and what he did for us. And that's what's so marvelous. So I just doodled a little bit here. I'm so thankful. What a salvation this Christ liveth in me. When I hear about the problems people are having, they're like the ordinary everyday kind of problems. But they become big to these people if they don't know Jesus. It surprises me and and I wonder about it because Jesus has been part of my life for so long. I've forgotten what it's like to worry about the everyday kind of things. Can you relate to that? Or are you one of these people that doesn't have Jesus and you don't 
know how you're going to get through today. For those of you watching that don't know him, I pray in Jesus' name that the Father would draw you by his Spirit and that you would come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because without him right now, this world is impossible. It's not sustainable. It's not going to end well. Unless you know Jesus. Jesus didn't promise us a smooth, no problem, you know, he didn't promise us a problem-free world. He said that we would have problems. We would have trouble. But not to worry, because he has overcome the world. And I'm so glad that he did. But he gives us his spirit when we ask him for forgiveness. And we thank him that he paid for our for our sins, but with his shed blood on the cross, he died for our sins. When we receive and trust his payment for our sins, then we are born again and he gives us his spirit. And his spirit inside of us gives us peace, peace that passes all understanding. And then we look to him for our future because he has plans for us if you don't know Jesus but you think you might like to I recommend reading the book of John Jesus talks about being born again in chapter 3 it's not a physical being born again it's a spiritual being born again um we were born once in the physical, but to be saved, we have to be born again in the spirit. Because as it is, we are born into a sinful nature, and that's what we need saving from. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I was online the other day and I was surprised. I came across this conversation about the occult and there were several people commenting who said there was absolutely nothing wrong with it and that you shouldn't listen to any church talk about it because they they would give you wrong information. And I thought, wow, here it is. What the Bible says is going to happen in the end days. People are calling evil good and good evil. I was just more surprised that it was so out in the open. Or it wasn't hinting at that opinion. It was just straight out. Don't listen to anybody in a church that would tell you that. Because there's absolutely nothing wrong with the occult. And if you know anything about the occult, you know it's demonic. And if you don't know, the Bible talks a lot about it. Especially when it refers to doctrines of demons. But yeah, if you don't know Jesus, I urge you, today is a day of salvation. Don't put it off. And then you too can say that what the Lord has done is marvelous in our eyes. And then we can bless the Lord together. So that's what I have today. I pray you are blessed. I pray you know Jesus. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.